The term gamification refers to the application of elements of game playing in non-game contexts, for example, to encourage participants to engage in a task that is otherwise deemed too monotonous. We're visiting the German sport university Cologne to interview Dr. Boris Fyodorov, who together with his team is testing a training device that uses virtual reality and is designed to help stabilize the muscles of the trunk by using a flight simulator. We study whether gamification makes it possible to deduce a new method for an effective training that takes place in virtual reality. We invite 30 test volunteers that perform a number of flights. The test subjects are given particular objectives. We primarily look at the muscle activity of the test subjects. Thanks to prolonged sitting and lack of exercise, the muscles of the trunk are untrained and often atrophied in many people. Stabilization training of the trunk muscles offers great potential for the prevention of disorders and pain in this area later in life. The Icarus VR training device is designed to increase general trunk muscle activity and intermuscular coordination. We measure the muscle activity by using EMG, electromyography, to make a certain deduction about intermuscular coordination. But we also take a look at the heart rate and motion sickness and monitor whether people feel sick or disoriented. And we also test the flow experience. Motion sickness is marked by a feeling of nausea or disorientation, similar to seasickness, which can be triggered by unfamiliar movements. A small percentage of Icarus test subjects initially experience slight dizziness when they take off their virtual reality glasses. This scenario is also called simulation sickness. Even so, the researchers are still interested in the possibilities virtual reality has to offer. We see great potential in virtual reality for medicine and education. It's already very popular in the field of biology. We believe this could be the first step towards eSports and that virtual reality can increase motivation and promote prevention. People use all of their body when they are in virtual reality. The test subject puts the glasses on and immerses in flying, that is to say, he or she sees mountains on the horizon. He also sees circles and distance and tries to fly through these circles. He has a 360-degree view and is able to navigate the vessel as needed. Ringe und Weite und versucht eben durch diese Ringe durchzufliegen, hat eine 360-Grad View und kann auch seine, seinen Flugkörper beliebig steuern. Since the Icarus VR experience is so far the first full-body virtual reality exercise, the idea is to find approaches for further development. During the exercise, the test persons are therefore subject to electrode measurements for muscle activation. Based on the study, it seems like Icarus is, in fact, able to provide trunk muscle strength training, especially the dorsal chain, that is to say, the muscles on the posterior of the body and the muscles of the neck and back are well innovated. The abdominal and shoulder muscles are also adequately engaged. The heart rate only increases moderately, approximately 100 to 120 beats per minute. This moderate increase in heart rate also boosts circulation. Especially in our modern world where we sit a lot, our trunk strength tends to be quite neglected. We are always excited when equipment ignites motivation in people to playfully exercise their trunk muscles. Virtual reality is actually nothing new in the field of therapy and especially in psychotherapy, anxiety management and confrontation therapy. While it's still relatively new in physiotherapy, there are very promising approaches used with stroke patients, which we are also closely following. The Icarus device is now moving into the mainstream. In the physiotherapy is noch relativ neu. Es gibt sehr vielversprechende Ansätze mit mit Schlaganfallpatienten, die wir auch genau beobachten. Das Icarus ist jetzt auf dem Weg dorthin, sich auch zu etablieren. Unlike conventional planking, training with the Icarus device is not monotonous. It's possible to complete different levels of training at different speeds, and you can even compete against each other. This opens up new possibilities for physiotherapy and rehabilitation.
Once the technical problems such as frames per second or pixels per inch, for example, are eliminated to where motion sickness can also be prevented, I see great potential for its use in physiotherapy or rehabilitation in general. The motivation and stimulation factor is very high with these types of devices and programs, which in turn can boost high repetition training. Of course, this increases the training or rehabilitation success rate.